third grade friends. I am here with your first chapter Friday. This week we are going to look at a series called Pig Sticks and Herald. These books can be found in our branches section under M-I-L. And our branches section is at the front of our library on the short shelves. Right when you walk in there's a booth and there's some short shelves and that is where you will find these books. We currently have three in our series. And I don't believe you have to read them in any particular order. So I am just going to pick one to read to you. So we are going to look at Pig Sticks and Herald and the Pirate Treasure. Chapter one is called A New Pig in Town. One morning, Pig Sticks was woken by a knock at his window. It was Harold. Wake up, Pig Sticks, he cried. Tup Town's in trouble. Come back after breakfast, mumbled Pig Sticks. There's no time for breakfast, said Harold. Pig Sticks threw on his bathrobe. He knew it must be serious. Harold never missed breakfast. Harold dragged Pig Sticks outside. They're going to destroy Tup Town, he cried. Nonsense, said Pig Sticks. No one would dare. But Pig Sticks was wrong. Tup Town was swarming with construction vehicles. Workers were about to knock down the whole town, starting with Queen Pigatoria's fountain. Stop! cried Pig Sticks. You can't do this. Tup Town belongs to us. A mean looking pig marched up to Pig Sticks. Actually, he snorted, Tup Town belongs to me. So we meet again, Sir Percival, said Pig Sticks. Sir Percival Snout was a distant relative, and he'd been a thorn in Pig Sticks trotter ever since they were piglets. At school, he always copied Pig Stick's homework. He even cheated in the three-trotted race on sports day. Queen Pigtoria gave this land to the people of Tup Town, said Pig Sticks. Everyone knows that. Prove it, growled Sir Percival. I can't, said Pig Sticks. The Tup Town deed has been lost for generations. What? You mean this, said per Sir Percival, holding out an old piece of paper. It says here that I am the heir to Tup Town. This land is mine. So you can see on his picture there, we have uh, eyebrow permanently set to angry. Tup Town deed, official looking piece of paper saying who owns Tup Town. Top hat, a sign of an important pig. Cane, for pointing at things and poking people. Tailored suit, expensive, but itchy. Pig Sticks looked at the deed. Where's the queen's royal seal, he asked. It must have faded, said Sir Percival. You have one day before I knock down your little houses and build a gold-plated mansion in the shape of my head. If you really own Tup Town, let me buy it from you, cried Pig Sticks. How does a million sound? Not enough, said Sir Percival. I want two million. Two million is pocket money to a pig like me. Then triple it. I want three million by midday tomorrow. Pig Sticks realized he had gotten overexcited, but it was too late. It's a deal, he said. Back at home, Pig Sticks was facing the fact. The only thing in his piggy bank was a hole. There must be a way for me to get the money, said Pig Sticks. Let's get our thinking caps on. Harold had forgotten his thinking cap. He started thinking without it, hoping Pig Sticks wouldn't notice. We could set up a cake shop, said Harold. You'd eat all of our cakes before we could sell them, said Pig Sticks. An idea hit him. How about we put on a fundraising concert starring me? The thought, the very thought of Pig Sticks singing made Harold feel quite ill. What we need to do is win the lottery or find some buried treasure, said Harold. Harold, you're a genius, cried Pig Sticks. There's a tale of a long lost treasure in my family. It belonged to my horrible great grand pig, Pirate Pigbeard the Awesome. You have a pirate grand pig, said Harold. Sadly, you can't choose your family, said Pig Sticks. Pirate Pigbeard made a fortune in gold and jewels, which legend says he buried one dark and stormy night. I hope he had an umbrella, said Harold. Pirates are always prepared for rain, said Pig Sticks, but he wasn't prepared for the stampede of seahorses that killed him. Luckily, he left his map behind with a riddle saying how to find his hidden treasure. No one has ever solved the riddle. If we can do that, we can find the fortune and save Tup Town. So here's our treasure map. 
That's a very difficult riddle, said Harold. How will we ever solve it? We must follow in Pigbeard's footsteps, said Pigsticks. We must think like pirates, talk like pirates, walk like pirates. We must be pirates. I don't want to be a pirate, said Harold. Of course you do, said Pigsticks. You'll make new friends, get lots of fresh sea air, and travel to far off lands. Harold watched nervously as Pigsticks laid out his pirate things. Why don't you ask Pirate George to help instead? He said, he used to be a pirate captain. I don't need another captain, said Pigsticks. I need a first mate, and that's you. Now, try on this pirate hat and think of the sea. So he's got a nice list of pirate gear there that they need. Suddenly, Harold felt much more like a pirate. Arr! Now, let's solve Pigbeard's riddle, said Pigsticks. Aye, aye, Captain, said Harold. The first part seemed easy enough. On Little Piggy Island, where seabirds sing, we need to find Little Piggy Island, said Harold. And to do that, we need a ship. Let's go to Otterley's boat yard, boat yard cried Pigsticks. Quick, we only have one day to save Tup Town. So you can find this whole series in the branches section under MLI. I hope you have a good first chapter Friday.